Uh, hello, everybody. How are you doing? This is the last session before the closing session, so I want to hear everybody get hype. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Um, who uh, am I? Why the heck should you care about who I am? Um, so like Lori said, I uh, was helping chair the program committee this year. I thought the content was really strong, really varied. Um, it was cool to hear all kinds of voices. I lead the DevOps Detroit group in Detroit, Michigan. Big fan there. If you were at KubeCon, you saw some really interesting parts of Detroit you probably have never thought about before. Uh, but I used to work at Armory. Uh, rest in peace. I used to work at Stoplight. Rest in peace. And now I'm at Opsera, which is still thriving. <laughs> So uh, until next time. Uh, OK, so let's take a reality check, right? Uh, things have been rough, <laughs> real rough, right? Uh, so I, I wanted to come up here and give a talk about the, the reality of what it means to be a developer right now. And you all have lived through this, so it's not news to you. Um, but I come from the business side of the house as a product marketer. I'm a director of product marketing. So I get to deal with all those jerks all day long who are pressuring me about selling, right? Selling the product, selling the software. And so I have that bridge between selling the software and helping the software get delivered. So I'm doing this. I'm having to deal with this. And you're having to deal with this. Do more with less. And continuous delivery is constantly having to evolve to keep up with this mandate from the business. Right? Y'all are being told, do more with less, fewer products, or fewer tools to use, fewer team members to do it with, fewer resources. So my goal today is to help you with some ways to advocate for yourselves to uh, help you combat this do more with less mentality that you're going to be dealing with every single day of your life. Because continuous delivery makes you valuable. It makes you a valuable contributor to the business. And so here's some ways to advocate for that. Denise had a great point yesterday. Uh, we, as the Continuous Delivery Foundation, want the first half here. We want to make uh, software delivery fast and safe. I like to add high quality just because I, I like quality as part of the conversation. But for you, we want you to be agile. We want you to be visible in your business. We want you to have a collaborative attitude. You might say, but Anna, I'm a developer. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> and so, you know, these, these are just frameworks by which you can utilize some ideas to become more visible at your org without necessarily having to walk up to somebody and shake their hand, OK? Because what happens when you're more visible, right? What happens when you're more collaborative? It's easier to keep you around. It's harder to make the cut, right? So we're going to start with people. Who are your secret partners? The revenue teams and customer success are your secret partners in being able to be more visible at the organization. They're the ones who are going to give you the intel on the customers and what they're looking for. Right? You're already getting that information from your product teams, but they're going to give you the, the nitty gritty of what customers are really mad about. The marketing people and the community teams are going to give you the intel about what's going on on the ground. So if you're, if you're shaking hands with those people digitally, let's say, via Slack, they know what's up. They can, they can give you the insight. And the business leadership and decision makers are your secret partners in the fight against being laid off. I'm sorry, but it's true. The more you can communicate to the business, the more valuable you will appear to the business. They may not have no idea what the hell you do, and they probably don't. But if you can communicate why your work matters to them, they might start to understand. Here are some ways to communicate those things. So remember how I said these are your secret partners? Here are the ways you can talk to them. So your customer and satisfaction teams, they're going to help you with metrics like NPS scores or G2 reviews or testimonials from customers. These are things you can actually track over time. These aren't just like anecdotal. NPS scores are actual customer satisfaction scores over time. So if you're doing a good job, you're going to be able to point to those things. Your marketing and social teams, your HR teams, those folks are going to be able to help you understand how satisfied the business is as a whole with the jobs that you all are doing, right? So if you hate it there and everybody else hates it there, customers are going to hate working with you. <laughs> your marketing team is going to be able to help you understand what it is that people in the, in the market are seeing about what your business does. 
And then the business and leadership folks are going to be able to talk to you about what is driving the business, right? What does my software contribute to? What am I trying to do with it? I'm trying to build sales pipeline, not pipelines, sales pipeline is <laughs> different, but investment or partnerships, right? What are our goals as a business? What, like, how do we raise money? If you know these things, you can better communicate with the people who make decisions at your business and you can follow the path down to where your software is contributing to the business. For every, every line of code you commit, how, how does that contribute to sales pipeline? I have to ask myself that question every damn day. It sucks, but it, it's worth it. It's worth, it's worth knowing at least. Okay, so the Dora team, they have an incredible amount of resources in their latest 2023 report. And like they said, they have the 2024 survey out, so definitely contribute to it. But some of their key capabilities that they, they help with um, are for the people capabilities to obviously foster a culture of continuous improvement. This will help you be more collaborative, more visible, more agile within your or own organization. Focus on showing and improving team outcomes, not individual productivity. I think Dora, the, the, the team themselves said, not to, we want team level. Individual productivity is not helpful to anybody, right? But your, your boss might say, how productive are you? You should be able to advocate for yourself with Dora's help to say, that's not what matters. What matters is how do we come together as a group to deliver the software that you need? And we should be able to empower, empower and advocate for the tools we want to use to do the job that we want to do. And we should be able to have high collaboration and communication across the partnerships that I showed. And when I say collaboration, the bar is very low. I'm talking a Slack message, folks. That, <laughs> an email. The bar is low. So processes, okay? You're familiar with these? We're here for CICD. We know this one. But the one I wanted to point to right now is immediate feedback mechanism across partnerships. NPS scores, customer satisfaction scores, those are all metrics. Those are all feedback metrics. So if you have a way to measure those things and get immediate feedback from those partners, it's a great idea to do so. Technology. One thing I wanted to point out here is unified insights and persona-driven dashboards. If you can communicate to the business in the ways they like to receive information, it's gonna make your teams stand out. It's gonna make you as an individual contributor make more sense to them. It's gonna make you visible. It's gonna make you collaborative and it's gonna make you relevant. And then treat your deliveries as products, not just a piece of technology, okay? Every single time you're going to deliver a line of code, ask yourself, what does this do for the business? Am I delivering something that is solving the problem for the business? I know it sucks. It's like the worst thing I could tell you, but I'm serious when, when I have been talking to all these people and they're saying, I'm gonna keep this developer because I've talked to them. And it's like, what? Why? <laughs> and they didn't go down to how many lines of code they're doing, how productive they are. No, they're well-rounded. They've thought about the business. They've delivered on teams. They've managed teams. They've created a lot of value around themselves by being more well-rounded. So where should you start? I said, you should start with your partnerships. Okay, so those, those three secret partners. Right? The, the customer success teams are a really great place to start. They're a little bit on the technical side. They're a little bit on the customer side. They're not as dumb and terrible as marketing people are. Um, and so I would definitely recommend you get, get started with them. They, they're on the ground. They're with your customers every single day. They can help you give perspective. And some suggested reading. Accelerate. Great book. You can also download the Dora report from my company. And thanks to the Dora team. We were a sponsor of last year's report. Big fans. And then the 2024 Hack, uh, Hacker Noon Developer Skills Report, totally recommend. Huge, huge, like, very valuable report about, uh, they, they titled it, an industry in transition. So lots, lots about AI, obviously, but uh, definitely about soft skills as well. So totally recommend. Oh, did I get through all the, am I good on time? Did I do it? Yeah, we did it. All right. Fantastic. <laughs>